Hey hipsters, it's Blake. Welcome back to another episode of Bruise Days. The series is returning. You guys have been asking for it. I'm excited to bring it to you. Uh, with the return of Bruise Days, I've decided to add a new feature to the episodes. Uh, we're going to be talking about beer a little bit, what I've been drinking. Um, today I'm going to talk a little bit about the new Belgian Voodoo Imperial IPA Ranger. Uh, really good brew. Nice bitter IPA if you're into that sort of stuff. Uh, I'm a beer enthusiast. I love beer, so... Uh, I'll be bringing something along to drink along the way. So while we're reviewing some brews, I uh, hope you have a drink with me and have some brews. <laughs> mm. So today, we're going to start off uh, some new brews on the new set, Brothers War. And uh, today I have a little interesting one for you. We're going to be building around Mono Red. Uh, we're going build to be building around Baby Mishra, the, uh, one of the smallest of three Mishras. Um, and this one is Mishra Excavation Prodigy. And uh, I've decided to kind of go kind of in the direction that the deck kind of points you, uh, which is like a sort of artifact reanimator sort of deck. Um, yeah, uh, we'll just get into it. Uh, Mishra Excavation Prodigy, the commander for our deck, is 2 in a red for a 2-1 legendary creature, human artificer. Uh, it has haste. You can pay one, tap, and discard a card to draw a card. And whenever you discard one or more artifact cards, you add red red. This ability only triggers once each turn. Um, really nice little package here. Uh, having haste is definitely relevant here. Uh, it gives you your mana back on the rummage uh, in the form of red red as long as you discard an artifact, which, spoiler, uh, our deck has like over 50 artifacts in it, so we always have the option to discard an artifact. And it allows us to pitch our bigger artifacts that we can't cast right now to give us more mana to cast the smaller artifacts that we have for in the meantime or we can spend the red red on just kind of whatever the red red that it gives you is not restricted to casting artifacts in any way um, so we can just cast our other artifact synergy cards or sort of other engine -y sort of cards so um, really cool little package real simple um, but it'll do the job very well for what we want to do um, so like I said yep this is an artifact reanimator base deck um, not completely you know un charted territory or anything um, but i think we're gonna have a really solid reliable build here and we get to include a few new sort of spicy cards that your average sort of uh artifact mono red artifact reanimator sort of deck has <clears throat> so the staple commander for most artifact reanimator sort of decks is the first card we're going to talk about which is duretti scrap savant uh, it's three and a red for a three loyalty planeswalker uh, plus two you discard up to two cards and then draw that many cards Minus two, sack an artifact. If you do return target artifacts from your graveyard to the battlefield, minus 10, uh, who cares? We're never going to get there. So this card is basically just in the deck as a, a four mana, reanimate an artifact. Uh, and then if we have absolutely nothing better to do, which God, I hope not. If we are, then we got much worse problems than casting a Duretti. Um, then I guess you can plus two it. But uh, this is card just comes down. Minus twos, reanimates an artifact, and then any extra value we get out of it, if we get an extra rummaging later, then that's cool. We like that. Um, but even just four mana reanimate an artifact is uh, definitely fine for us. Uh, next up, we have a two uh, colorless planeswalkers that are going to act as removal uh, and sort of ramp for our deck because mono red's not the best at removal. So these will be uh, great for us. First up is Ugin the Ineffable. It's a six mana, four loyalty planeswalker. Colorless spells you cast cost two less to cast. That's huge. The vast majority of our deck is colorless. So this will make a lot of our spells free or much, much cheaper. And then it has uh, two very relevant abilities. Plus one, exile the top card of your library face down and look at it. Create a 2-2 two -two colorless spirit creature token. When that token leaves the battlefield, you put the exiled card into your hand. So it gives us kind of a pseudo card advantage engine. It's kind of slow. It makes just two twos, but when they die, you get the card. So... Um, that's great. That's not a, a bad ability. But more importantly, minus three to destroy target permanent that's one or more colors. Uh, like I said, mono red struggles to destroy lots of different kinds of permanents, big creatures, enchantments, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and this gives us a way to uh, discount our spells while also interacting with spells that we don't normally interact with very well. Um, so yeah, that's amazing. Uh, Ugin the Ineffable, if you haven't tried it in your uh, artifact-based decks, uh, you gotta try it. This card is the truth, I'm telling you. And next up is the other Ugin, Ugin the Spirit Dragon. It's an eight loyal it's an eight mana seven loyalty planeswalker, plus two. Ugin Spirit Dragon deals three damage to target creature or player. Minus X. 
ex exile each permanent with converted mana cost X or less. That's one or more colors. And then minus 10, you gain seven life, draw seven cards, then put up to seven permanent cards from your hand onto the battlefield. Um, yeah, so this is just a board wipe. You just come down, you just minus X for whatever you need, exile all the relevant things on the board. Uh, and it's kind of a pseudo plague wind as it'll only hit like one or two of our cards. It'll hit our commander, obviously, but then it might hit one or two other synergy cards, which, you know, are just kind of whatever to us. Um, the main thing is that this interacts on a, a board wipe level with a lot of the permanents that uh, we have trouble with. So yeah, Ugin, stellar card for the deck. Uh, it's one of the few board wipes we run in the deck, and it's kind of a one-sided board wipe in a way. Uh, excellent card, obviously. Some people, this card's sometimes too good, or some playgroups won't uh, like this card. So maybe something you should talk about with your playgroup, see if they're if they're down for Ugin. They probably won't because nobody likes board wipes, but you need an interaction in your decks, and Mono Red struggles with that. So uh, Ugin does that very well. And it's thematically uh, works with the deck. So next up, we're going to get into creatures. Uh, the vast majority of the creatures in the deck are artifact creatures, uh, because of course they are. And uh, the other, the only ones that aren't interact very uh, favorably with artifacts. Um, but I tried to cut like anything in the deck that was not an artifact, essentially, to um, really play into the the uh, powerful aspects of the deck, like the Ugins, and like you'll see some other cards uh, coming up the more synergy we can build into our deck and the more flexibility we can have uh, we'll just add a lot more consistency even though sometimes some of our spells could be more efficient if it were like uh, you know a chaos warp instead of like um, a meteor golem we're not running meteor golem but just as an example um, but the other thing like a meteor golem is going to trigger a lot more of our synergies work much better with our game plan being it will be able to be recurred so <clears throat> those sort of cards uh, I try to cut as much of as I can and try to make everything I can an artifact outside of uh, very important uh, synergy pieces. So uh, having said that, we'll start off with uh, the creatures. Like I said, most of them artifacts. Burnished Heart, a classic. Three mana, two, two. You can pay three and sack it to get two basics, put them into play tapped. We need ramp. It's an artifact creature that ramps us. That's great. We love that. Canoptic Spider. This is a new one. Five mana for a 4-4 four, four artifact creature spider with flying. Flying spider, apparently. Whenever another non-token artifact creature or vehicle enters the battlefield under your control, you draw a card. Um, this card is, like, a little iffy for me. You'd think that this would be just a slam dunk. Um, but in all reality, we have less than 20 artifact creatures. I think it's, like, 19 or 18. Um, so it's, like, you know, we're, we're not guaranteed to draw off this card every turn. Uh, however, there's a couple things that I really like about this card in the deck. One, uh, a lot of the artifact creatures that we have in the deck, we plan on looping back and forth from the graveyard into play. Uh, sometimes, maybe even multiple times a turn. So it's uh, just a slow, consistent sort of card advantage engine for us in, uh, and works with the synergies in our deck. And we have some ways to be really explosive and draw a ton of cards with this out of nowhere, uh, which we'll get to later. And because of those synergies, um, even though we don't innately have uh, quite as many artifact creatures as I'd, as I'd like for this card to be in the deck. Um, I think it makes the cut here. Synergizes with our game plan. Gives us card advantage, which we need. So uh, I'm willing to give it a shot here, for sure. Next up, Canoptic Tomb Sentinel, another new card. Four mana, four, three, Vigilance, artifact creature, insect. When it enters the battlefield from a graveyard, exile up to one target non-land permanent. And then it has Unearth of 7 mana. Um, this card has just been an absolute all-star in the games that uh, I've got to test it in and seen it played in. Um, the key with this card is that you don't want to unearth it and you want to bring it back by other means. And if you really have to cast it earlier so you can like put it into play and then sack it or whatever, um, then it's you know still fine. It's still like an artifact you can throw down and get some triggers from certain things and then... Uh, you know, put it in your graveyard later to where you really want it to bring it back and start exiling non-land permanents, which is significantly better than Meteor Golem. Uh, destroy nowadays just doesn't cut it. Uh, exile is really, re really where you want to be if you can. Uh, so yeah, Canoptic Tomb Sentinel, another card that allows us to interact with a lot of permanent types that Red struggles with. Exiles them, gets rid of them for good. Um, just a stellar card. We have lots of ways to bring this back without unearthing it. So it's definitely a card that we can loop without having to exile it. Um, but if the if we're really desperate and we need to fall back on the unearth clause, hey, it's there. We can throw it away with our commander 
and then it gives us some mana to help us unearth it. Um, so yeah, super, super stellar card. I've been nothing but impressed with this card. Containment Construct. Oh, you guys know I love this card. Two mana, two one artifact creature. Construct. Whenever you discard a card, you may exile that card from your graveyard. If you do, you may play that card this turn. This card works so well with our commander because our commander sort of ramps us. It gives us the mana back uh, that we discarded the artifact with, and then we can cast it with this. So this is pretty reliable card advantage. Um, this is definitely a containment construct deck for sure. We have other ways to discard in the deck uh, outside of our commander, just in case we have the fallback of our commander, you know, getting stuck or costing a million mana and we don't want to cast it again. Um, but yeah, this you guys know I love containment construct, and this is definitely the deck for it. Next up is Dockside Extortionist. <laughs> then Duplicate. Uh, six mana artifact creature. Uh, it's a shapeshifter. It's a 2-4. When it is the battlefield, you exile target non-token creature. As long as a card exiled with Duplicate is a creature card, uh, this gets the power and toughness of the card. Uh, so yeah, this is just exile removal for creatures. Once again, exile stellar. This is an artifact creature, so it's something that we can bring back and forth from the graveyard. Just removal. Uh, it works with our game plan. Bit heavy on the mana, but, you know, we're not going to cast this all the time. We're going to try to cheat this into play sometimes, too. Um, just a really reliable, good card. Sometimes it may be huge if it randomly exiles something big. But, you know, whatever. Uh, just removal. We need removal on the deck. Works with all the things that we want. Foundry Inspector. Classic artifact creature. It's a 3 mana 3 2 artifact creature construct. Artifact spells you cast cost one less to cast. Uh, same reason Ugin's good. Discounts all of our things. And this one's even an artifact creature itself. So it synergizes with all of our things. Goblin Engineer. One and a red for a 1 2 goblin artificer. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you search the library for an artifact card and put it into your graveyard. Then shuffle your library. You can pay a red tap and sack an artifact or return target artifact card with converted mana cost 3 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Uh, Goblin Engineer, stellar, stellar card, lets you tutor for any artifact to put in your graveyard, and then you can only bring back small artifacts, but that's totally fine. Um, you can put the important thing in your graveyard, like the Canoptic Tomb Sentinel, if you really need to answer something, uh, but then bring back your, you know, value engine sort of uh, recursive cards that you want. So, Goblin Engineer, just a super stellar card, and uh, even better is Goblin Welder, the next card. It's a 1 mana, 1 1. Goblin Artificer, you can tap and choose an artifact. Uh, in a graveyard and on the battlefield controlled by the same player and then you sacrifice the creature the, the you sacrifice the artifact and bring back the other artifact um, just an absolutely amazing card uh, kind of in, broken in a lot of ways uh, just way too cheap of a card for the effect that it has Having a, you, you've seen like Doretti that's kind of the rate that we expect 4 mana to get this effect and this is 1 mana and you can do it every single turn uh, you can even use it on your opponent's things if they have a really troublesome artifact for you. I doubt they will compared to what the very powerful things you can be doing with this deck. Um, so yeah, Goblin Welder, just a super insane card, stellar for this deck. And a good way to go get our Goblin Welder, Imperial Recruiter. Uh, two and a red for a 1-1 one, one Human Advisor. When it is the battlefield, you search library for a creature card with power 2 or less. You reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle. Um, just a really good toolbox tutor for us. It can get us our Goblin Welder, Goblin Engineer, Duplicant even, if we need Interaction, Dockside Extortionist if we need a ton of mana, Containment Construct if we need uh, Card Advantage. It's even got some synergy with some other cards that we're going to talk about later, like Junk Diver, Mirror Retriever. Um, you know, it can basically get us just about any card in our, any creature card in our deck. Uh, Slow Bat if we need a Sack Outlet. Um, just like Reckless Fire Weaver if we need damage. Uh, we'll get to those cards, of course, but... Um, just a stellar sort of toolboxy tutory card. Next up is a newer card people have kind of forgot about because it's from Commander of Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate, which is apparently the worst set ever printed. Um, not really, that's a meme. Uh, <laughs> Ingenious Artillerist, two and a red for a 3 1 human artificer. Whenever one or more artifacts enter the battlefield under your control, it deals that much damage to each opponent. Uh, so this will just sometimes absolutely nuke our opponents with certain cards in our decks. Um, just allows us to get a little extra reach in our deck. Um, our deck kind of game plan is going to be mostly just getting value and then beating in with giant artifact creatures and then, uh, you know, just doing chunks of damage. But Ingenious Artillerist and a uh, very similar card we mentioned earlier, Reckless Fireweaver, which we'll talk more about, um, kind of both do the same effect. 
what it allows us to do is give us a little more reach on our opponents if they start having plenty of blockers or being able to prevent combat damage or something like that. Um, this gives us a way to kind of go over the top of that and kind of close the game out and also chip away at their life totals while they're dirtling around like we are. <laughs> uh, so yeah, really good synergy card, even though it's not an artifact, uh, I think it makes the cut here. Junk Diver, really good uh, utility piece in our deck. It's a three mana artifact creature bird. It's a one one with flying. And when it dies, you return another target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. Um, we have a couple cards like this. Uh, they're really good uh, value. It allows a real toolboxy sort of effect. All the big artifacts that we might discard early to our Mishra's effect um, to get mana and to get them out of our hand to get some other things to do early game. We can get them back later as we need them with Junk Diver. Um, yeah, just a really good re utility card. Koldotha Forge Master, 5 mana artifact creature construct. It's a 3 5. You can tap and sack 3 artifacts to search the library for an artifact card and put it onto the battlefield. Wow, very powerful. We have some uh, very toolboxy, powerful, huge CMC artifacts that we want in cheating to play. Uh, sacrificing 3 artifacts is not really a cost for us. Um, in fact, there's some cards that are in the deck just so that we can sack whatever artifacts we need to when we need to, just to kind of protect them from getting exiled, you know, putting them in the graveyard instead of getting, uh, you know, anguished on making or whatever. Um, so yeah, and this is just going to cheat some insane artifacts into play and then put more artifacts in the graveyard, which we can just get back. <laughs> so Cold Oath of Forge Master, a super stellar card. Obviously the uh, mana cost and the fact that you have to kind of untap with it it's kind of a bummer here, uh, but it's definitely worth worth the cost. And, you know, this if this eats removal, you're not feeling too bad about it, honestly, because uh, we got uh, plenty of other powerful cards that we can be playing. If this is something that's going to catch some removal so other things won't, then I'm happy for that. Mirror Battle Spear, the classic battle ball. Seven mana artifact creature, Mirror Construct. It's a 4-7. When it enters the battlefield, you create four 1-1 one, one Mirror Creature artifact tokens. And whenever it attacks, you can tap any you can tap any number of untapped mirror you control, and then it gets that much power and deals that much damage to the player that or planeswalker it's attacking. Um, great card, just does a lot of damage. Huge, makes five artifacts when it enter, uh, when it enters, so it's going to trigger uh, you know ingenious artillerist a ton, deal a lot of damage, spread a lot of, spread around a lot of damage when it attacks. Um, just a good big idiot, yeah. <laughs> just a good big idiot mirror retriever a classic it's basically a junk diver without wings costs one less mana uh great card good synergy card for the deck all same reasons that junk diver is good phyrexian triniform nine mana artifact creature golem it's a nine nine when it dies you create three 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 colors golem artifact creature tokens and it has encore of 12 uh, Encore means you exile it from your graveyard and then you get a token copy for each opponent and they have to attack that opponent and then you sack them at the end step. Uh, a lot of words, but essentially what we want to do with this card is bring it back from the graveyard uh, and then sack it so that way we would get three more artifact creatures. So it just produces tons of artifact mana. It's a really good card to pitch early for Mishra and kind of forget about it for a long time. And then when we run out of things to do, it's like, well, this thing can make nine artifacts out of no or 12 artifacts out of nowhere. Uh, so that's really good. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's just a um, kind of a role player in the deck. Uh, not the most powerful card in the deck, but um, I think it'll be uh, a worth a try, at least in the deck. Quicksmith Genius, 2 and a red for a 3-2 Human Artificer. Whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, you may discard a card if you do draw a card. Uh, so this just allows us to churn through our deck uh, a lot faster filling our graveyard with all the artifacts that we want to find uh, and put into our graveyard. Uh, it's kind of a redundant effect of our commander in case we uh, have our commander removed a couple times or something because our commander is only a 2-1, so it dies to basically any board wipe. Um, so if you get in one of those games where it's real grindy and taking forever, Quicksmith Genius will help you churn through your deck really quickly and find the cards that you need because um, it triggers for every artifact that enters token non-token doesn't matter you get the rummage effect so uh that's great this is car this is a card that i almost gave the axe to and put in the sideboard um but it's just going to churn through our deck so fast that i think it's worth the include even though it's not an artifact creature so i want to try it out at least reckless fire weaver made a lot of mentions to it earlier uh it's one in a red for a one three human artificer 
When an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, it deals one damage to each opponent. Uh, very similar to the last card, Quicksmith Genius. This doesn't say non-token, uh, and it doesn't say once per turn like a lot of the newer cards do. So this is just going to deal a lot of damage in the same way that Ingenious Artillerist is. Uh, they're essentially the same card. This one just costs one less mana, so it's better. Uh, it just deals out a lot of damage um, and helps us get around combat issues that we might run into. Rune Grinder, 5 and a red for a 7-4 artifact creature construct with menace. When it dies, each player may discard their hand and draw 7 cards, and it has mountain cycling for 2 generic. Um, this is just a nice card to pitch early to Mishra if we need a mountain, or if we just want to get the uh, a different card with Mishra's rummage ability. Um, and then later, if we run out of cards or need something to do, it's a real good card to reanimate and then sack immediately to get a brand new hand. So, um, yeah, Rune Grinder's great. It's a card that puts itself in the graveyard even if we don't have our commander out, uh, and it helps us hit our land drops. Uh, so that's great. This card's not really used for attacking. I mean, I guess it can attack if you, for some reason, want to untap with it. Um, but yeah, it's mostly just there to wheel and uh, put itself in the graveyard. Scavenged Brawler, a new card. Six mana artifact creature construct. It's a 4-4. Four, four. Flying, Vigilance, Trample, and Lifelink. And then it has an ability of pay five generic and exile this from your graveyard. Choose target creature, put four 1-1 one, one counters, a flying counter, a Vigilance counter, a Trample counter, and a Lifelink counter on that creature. Activate only as a sorcery. Uh, this is a great card to pitch to our commander. Uh, as I'm mostly interested in doing the activated ability and not so much casting it. Um, I mean, it's fine if you have to cast this card. Um, but what you really want to do is uh, take a card like, uh, I don't know, the Rune Grinder we just mentioned, and turn it into an even bigger idiot with every keyword. <laughs> um, so yeah, Scavenger Brawler is mostly here to discard and then to uh, exile it from the graveyard. But hey, if it accidentally comes into play for some reason, uh, it's a definitely a fine creature. Flying Vigilance Trample Lifelink is uh, definitely something that holds uh, attacking and blocking really well. Keeps our life total buffered as well. Scrap Trawler, amazing, amazing artifact creature. Uh, three mana, three two artifact creature construct. When it or another artifact you control is put into your graveyard from the battlefield, return to your hand target artifact card in your graveyard with lesser mana value. Um, yeah, this is just going to get us so much value from the graveyard. Uh, it's going to do all the things that are good about Mirror Retriever and uh, Junk Diver and that stuff, but it also triggers for all of our other things that die besides it. So it's basically like a super version of those cards. Um, just a stellar, stellar card. It just can provide us with tons of card advantage uh, and really get our engines going with this card out. Scrap Welder, two and a red for a 3-3 three, three, Goblin Artificer. Tap and sacrifice an artifact with converted mana value X. You return target artifact card with mana value less than X from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste until end of turn. Um, so this is kind of a weird reanimate, much more balanced effect compared to the... Uh, uh, goblin Welder and uh, Goblin Engineer, um, for reference, here they are again. Um, it's the newer, much more balanced version, because it's three mana to do it, and uh, it only does the reanimate thing, it doesn't do any sort of tutor, and you can only get something less mana value, uh, while the other ones don't really care what mana value you get, uh, compared to the thing that you sack. That being said, the haste is kind of nice here, actually. Um, and we have kind of a cascading level since we have since our entire deck is basically artifacts We have kind of a cascading level of uh, Artifacts that we can bring back in fact We have plenty of artifact lands in the deck that we uh, can pitch to Mishra early to get uh, You know the mana from them if we're kind of flooding uh, and then we can get those back and use this as kind of like a pseudo ramp spell um, Which is kind of nice if we have random artifacts that we don't care about lying around and we want to ramp We can do it that way too, which is cute um, this is just an interesting artifact card that I've been wanting to try, and I think it's worth a try here. And I think it'll, I think it'll play out well here. It allows us to kind of get our ETBs over. Uh, we need more artifact sack outlets. We want as many of those as we can get to keep getting our ETBs and our dies triggers over and over. Um, so yeah, I think this is going to be a good role player in the deck. This one could end up getting the axe if it doesn't perform well enough. Um, this is definitely the worst of these effects that we have in here. Um, but I think we want all of these effects, basically. So I want to give this one a shot, at least.
And I think the getting haste thing here is actually kind of cool. Slow bad goblin tinker. Speaking of artifact sack outlets, one in a red for a one two goblin artificer. You can sack an artifact to give target artifact indestructible to end of turn. Um, the indestructible is actually not really that important uh, here. There's not many things that we like care a ton about protecting. Um, this is mostly just here as just a nice little artifact sack outlet. Um, I will say if somebody Vandal Blasts us, then this card can be useful. We can sack the artifact creatures or whatever we don't care about to protect our mana rocks or whatever. Um, so that's nice. It's not like giving an artifact indestructible is like useless. But the main thing we want to do is be able to put our artifacts back in our graveyard to bring them back uh, with all the effects that we have that do that. Um, and the upside of being able to protect things if we really need to is cool. Uh, at two mana, this is a really low rate to pay. Um, and we want uh, plenty of sack outlets for artifacts if we can. Uh, and this is a real solid one, I think. So uh, definitely worth the include here. Solemn Simulacrum, a classic. You know what it does. Uh, it's here because it fits the deck theme and it's good. <laughs> Steel Hellkite, another classic. Six mana artifact creature dragon. It's a 5-5 five, five flyer. You pay two and you can give it plus one power. Or you can pay X, tar destroy each non-land permanent with mana value X, whose controller was dealt combat damage by Steel Hellkite this turn. Activate only once each turn. Um, so yeah, this card's just nice for getting rid of the problem permanents like we talked about earlier that Red struggles with. Um, this is very good at board wiping tokens especially. Uh, you can attack a tokens player and kill all their tokens all at once, all their stupid treasures or soldiers or goblin tokens or whatever they got. Um, so that's great. That's what this card is really good at. Um, I, I was even thinking of including engineered explosives for that reason, even though we're a monocolor deck. Um, but you know, uh, it didn't make the cut, but this card is just a, a big artifact creature idiot that, um, can keep doing that effect over and over again. Um, just a classic interaction sort of creature threat that we have in the deck fulfills multiple roles, does what the deck wants. Workshop Assistant, uh, it's essentially a dunk, Junk Diver and Mirror Retriever. It's a 3-mana 1-2 that does the dies, get an artifact back from your graveyard. We want all these effects that we can have. Uh, really good synergy card for the deck. Worm Coil Engine, a favorite card of mine. I absolutely adore this card. 6-mana artifact creature for Rexian Worms. It's got for Rexian creature type now. It's a 6-6 six, six with Death Touch and Lifelink, and when it dies, it splits. You get a 3-3 three, three with, art, with uh, Death Touch and a 3-3 three, three with Lifelink. Um, just a great card. Super good card. Buffers our life total. Leaves us with bodies afterwards that are annoying. Just a great card. Uh, we'll move on to sorceries now. We only got eight. Uh, like I said, I wanted to cut all as many cards as I could um, that weren't artifacts. So uh, we have All is Dust, which is another board wipe for us. It's a seven mana tribal sorcery Eldrazi. Not that that's relevant. Um, but each player sacrifices all colored permanents he or she controls. Excellent board wipe for our deck. Deals with all the prominent permanents just like Ugin has. Uh, makes people sacrifice them so it gets around indestructible just like Ugin does um, and it's kind of a pseudo plague wind as we only have a few colored permanents in the deck so uh, we aren't going to lose much to this card so uh, just once again another great board wipe for the deck blasphemous act uh, the last board wipe for the deck uh, you know what it does we're red we need the best board wipe almost in the format for creatures uh, yeah this is probably the best creature board wipe in the format um I think I'm comfortable saying that. Maybe Toxic Dale uses us up there too, uh, just because it gets around indestructible, but this card is so cheap. Anyway, different tangent for a different day. Uh, we're playing Blasphemous Act because we're red. And similarly, we're playing Jessica's Will because we're in red. Um, this is a deck that I almost cut Jessica's Will in, um, as we will likely have our commander out most of the time. But my main holdup was with this card is we don't always want to cast it on three. And when we don't cast on three, we're not always going to get seven mana. And sometimes we might exile two big things. Uh, and then it's like, well, well, I can't cast both of them. And I don't want them to sit in exile because a lot of the big artifacts that we have, we really don't want to sit in exile. We really want to be able to put them into play and sack them and do all of our thing, you know. So this card kind of has low synergy with our deck. But I felt like that the power level of this card and just the sheer amount of uh, card advantage slash mana that it gives you was still just worth it because our commander is only three mana um so yeah i ended up keeping jessica's will and if if you cut this card then like i could definitely see it um but yeah it's in the deck because it's jessica's will 
Zahili's Directive. Love this card. Always been looking for a home for this card. X, red, red, red for a sorcery. It has improvised, so you can tap your artifacts to pay for generic costs of this card. You reveal the top X cards of your library. You may put any number of artifact cards with converted mana cost X or less from among them onto the battlefield. Uh, then the cards that you don't put on the battlefield, you put into your graveyard. Uh, really awesome card for this deck. Uh, we really want to put as much mana into this as we can. It's like a, a really big Genesis wave for us as we have so many artifacts in our deck. Half of our deck is artifacts, maybe more. I didn't do the exact count, but it's pretty close to uh, 50 plus. So yeah, Sahili's Directive. This is definitely the home for this card. Love this card. Always been looking for a home for this card, and I never felt like Doretti was quite the home because you would always run like lots of you know other discard outlets and stuff like that, um, and you wouldn't have quite as many artifacts for this card. And most of the artifacts you'd have would be like a ton of CMCs. So you wouldn't like have a ton of artifacts to help feed into the mana cost of this and stuff so this card has always been awkward for most decks but this card definitely feels like the home for this deck for sure which i love scrap mastery three red red for a sorcery each player exiles all artifact cards from his or her graveyard then sacrifices all artifacts he or she controls then puts all the cards he or she exiled this way onto the battlefield so you swap your artifacts from play to the ones with your graveyard um amazing does all the things that we want to do um we can sack a lot of our artifacts we have on battlefield into our graveyard and then bring them all back get all of our etbs again and just go absolutely nuts it kind of acts as a board wipe for our opponents too uh, as most other decks don't tend to put a lot of artifacts in the graveyard it's all their stupid little mana rocks and treasure and stuff that they have um, lying around it's use it or lose it time uh meanwhile we don't care we want all of our things just to go in and out of our graveyard so that's great that's exactly what we want to do and sometimes it doesn't even matter sometimes we can just sack all the artifacts we have on board and get them all back so we don't even lose anything uh so yeah scrap mastery one of the best cards in the deck for sure trash for treasure two and a red for a sorcery as an additional cost to cast a spell you sacrifice an artifact return target artifact from your graveyard to the battlefield that's what we want to do of the effects in the deck that do this this one is the worst um probably even past um scrap welder because scrap welder you can at least do over and over again even though it doesn't cheat costs um and this is just a one-shot effect however like i said um i i think we want all of these effects at least for the number of cards that we have that do this effect so uh it still makes the cut here vandal blast uh you know what it does it's good um we just run it in this deck because uh we're not very good at killing artifacts with the other cards we have in the deck as you've seen most of the other board wipes kill colored permanents so um the fact that we can hit the colorless permanents with this card is great uh wheel of fortune uh it's two in a red you discard your hand and draw seven cards everybody does um this card's great puts more cards in our graveyard gives us a brand new hand red kind of struggles sometimes with uh keeping enough cards to play uh, kind of the reason that i included the flying spider to at least give us some card advantage consistency. Um, but we don't mind discarding our hand at all. Um, it allows us to get the two red mana uh, from our commander, because if you read Mishra carefully, uh, you don't have to use its looting effect to get the mana. It's just if you discard the artifact for any reason, you get the two red mana. So um, that's great. Uh, we don't have to activate our commander to get our mana with Wheel of Fortune. So this is just kind of a, you do all the things that you can do uh, for the time, and then when you're getting low on cards in hand, you deploy your wheel and get a brand new hand. Um, so yeah, it's great. Uh, we have plenty of discard synergies, plenty of graveyard synergies. Just draws us cards for the most part. Valakut Awakening. You know this wouldn't be my video if I didn't have at least one modal DFC in here. Uh, it's two and a red for an instant. You put a number of car cards from your hand on the bottom of your library, and then you draw that many plus one. Uh, and then the backside is a tapped red source. Um, so yeah, this is just uh, a pseudo like optional wheel for you um, if you really need it. But most of the time, it's just going to be a land, and uh, that's great. This is one of the best modal DFCs, if you ask me, um, because this is an effect that you always want in your decks. It doesn't even make you go down a card for casting it, because it draws that many plus one, so it replaces itself. Um, yeah, just a really, really great modal DFC optional card here, but most of the time, it'll be a land like most of them are, but... Um, that's fine. Next up, we're going to move into the large number of non-creature artifacts we have. 
And we're going to start off with the classic Arcane Signet. You know what it does. It's great. Cursed Mirror. Oh, I love this card. This card has always been just an absolute amazing card in every deck that I played it in and overperforming. Uh, it's two and a red for an artifact. It taps for red mana. Uh, but what enters the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield, except it gains haste. So here's the thing that I've noticed about clones. I used to have a clone tribal deck uh, where I played all the clones that I could. And um, and it turned out that Cursed Mirror is just a better clone than like any other clone, really. Um, as it's the cheapest at three mana besides Phantasmal Image. Uh, and it gives the thing haste. So let's say most of the time when you clone something, you want to copy your opponent's like Sun, Titan, or whatever, right? Uh, so that way you can get its ETB trigger and hopefully get an attack trigger out of it. Curse Mirror will just do that twice. Gets the ETB, you get attack with it because that is haste. Haste is really important on this card. Uh, works with a Tali's, anything basically. Most creatures that people play nowadays are either ETB, tons of value, or attack, tons of value. And this will get both of those things. And then at three mana in red, which is not a very good color at all at cloning stuff, you can get all that. And it even leaves you behind with a mana rock. So you get to get all the value that you want up front, and they don't even get the opportunity to really remove the thing that sucks and get you all that value. It just turns into a good card for your deck, an artifact that produces some mana. So Cursed Mirror, amazing card. I wouldn't play it in like four or five colors probably. Um, but like I'd even consider playing in some three color decks, but especially two color decks that are playing red. Like, oh yeah, I'm slam dunking this card all day. Curse Mirror has been just an absolute overperformer in all the decks that I've played it in. Every time it hits the battlefield, it makes a huge impact. Um, and in this deck, we can even recur it. So yeah, Curse Mirror, just absolutely stellar. The one thing that's kind of awkward about this card is this is a colored artifact. So it will die to our random Ugin, all his dust effects, but like mostly getting exiled to Ugin sucks. If we have to sack to all his dust, who cares? It puts it in our graveyard where we want it. But um, just be careful. This does get exiled with Ugin is all I'm saying. Darksteel Forge, the classic artifact card. Uh, it's nine mana. Artifact. Artifacts you control are have indestructible. Protects your whole board. Protects itself. Um, if they don't draw exile removal, then they can't really deal with anything that you have. And that's great. So, yeah. Darksteel Forge, great card to cheat into play uh, with Goblin Welder effects. Probably it ends up usually being the first card... Uh, that we put into play with Cold Oath of Forge Master so we can protect our board more and keep using Cold Oath of Forge Master. Um, but yeah, Dark Steel Forge, I'm sure you've played against it if you've played against artifact decks. Um, really good, resilient board protection, even though it's a ton of mana. It's still worth it. Every Flowing Chalice, it's a mana rock. Every two mana that you pay into it, it produces uh, a colorless mana. Really good, flexible mana rock. Sometimes in this deck, we might even want to cast it for zero, so that way we can just immediately sack it to one of our uh, Goblin Welders or whatever. So, yeah, Everflowing Chalice, just a really good mana rock. Felwar Stone, another really good two-mana mana rock. Um, notably, the two-mana mana rocks are very important in this deck as they uh, allow us to play it on two, play Commander on three, and then immediately activate our Commander on turn three, which is really nice. Grinding Station, really good sack outlet for this deck. Uh, it's two mana artifact. You can sacrifice an artifact to have target player mill three cards. It's always going to be us. Uh, whenever an artifact comes into play, any artifact, doesn't matter if you make it or your opponents make it, uh, you untap the Grinding Station. Typically, this card's thought of as like a combo card, and I mean, often it is, but not in our deck. Most decks that I play, they just run Grinding Station as a nice little artifact sack outlet that helps fuel your graveyard to get more synergies going. Um, so yeah, Grinding Station, just a really good sack outlet for us. Puts more things in our graveyard where we want them. Just great. Just remember that it untaps on any artifact entering uh, your opponent's treasures. They cast an artifact creature. Uh, even when they play an artifact land, when you play an artifact land, anything. Any artifact entering the battlefield, untap trigger. You'll get And you'll stack up the untap triggers. So if like three artifacts enter at once, you'll have three untap triggers, and you can respond to each one by tapping it uh, and sacking an artifact. So... Just keep that in mind. Kind of a weird old card, so it has uh, pretty weird interactions with things. That's why it combos really well with a lot of things, because it's old um, and doesn't have once per turn or your artifacts or any of the new stuff that we put on cards nowadays to balance them. Um, so yeah, really good sack outlet for this deck. Mills lots of cards. Does what we want. Hedron Archive, 4-mana artifact, taps for 2 colorless, or you can pay 2 tap and sack to draw 2 cards. 
Um, this is definitely one of the decks that we will probably sack this to draw two cards more than most other decks. As, like I said earlier, red kind of struggles with card draw, uh, without exile, without like impulse, exile, card draw. Um, and this deck doesn't really want that, as we can't often cast a lot of the big things that we might draw. Uh, sometimes we just want to put them in our hand to discard. So we really want like actual card draw. Um, and this is just a good mana rock in the meantime. Helps us get to those big cards if we actually need to cast them. Um, so yeah, Eden Archive, great card for the deck. Acre Wellspring, really good role player here. It's a two mana artifact when it enters the battlefield or is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you draw a card. So two mana, draws a card, replaces itself, and then it just sits there as an artifact that's cool and everything. Uh, and then eventually when you need to sack it for some other purpose, like Goblin Welders or some other cards that we'll get to later, then it's there for that and we'll draw you a new card. Uh, so that's great. That's what we need. Speaking of cards that are great for sacking Icar Wellspring, Krok Clan Ironworks. It's a four mana artifact, sacrifice an artifact. You add two colorless mana to your mana pool. Um, you can sack any artifact, lands, creatures, Icar Wellsprings. Um, just an amazing card. Once again, typically another combo card. Usually how I play this card is very similar to Grinding Station though. Um, it's just a really good sack outlet, produces a ton of mana, just a really powerful, very good card. I will say, there's I, looking at the deck, there's almost certainly a way you can combo with the deck if you really want to. Um, for example, if you have like Ugin the Ineffable out, reduces your spells, uh, and then you have like Mirror Retriever, Junk Diver, uh, you can sack them to Kark Karen Ironworks to help pay for their costs. And then you can start building up like, you know, infinite mana and then start looping them without paying their mana, without sacking them to the grinding station and then mill your opponents out or whatever. There's some like really convoluted lines that you can do if you have 100 cards on the battlefield, but, um, you know, that's going to happen with artifact decks. So uh, if you're really, really against that, then like maybe cut some of these cards. Um, but in all reality, they're just going to be good, good cards in your deck that do the thing that you want to do, which is give you sack outlets for artifacts. Um, and help fuel your game plan. So, just so you know, if you're very against like convoluted combos, then this deck definitely has some convoluted combos, but they're pretty few and far between. So you have to really be trying for them if that's what you want. But if you're really, really against that, then like you know, probably cut KCI because it's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty known for that. Um, but yeah, amazing card, Liquid Metal Torque. Two mana uh, artifact taps for a colorless, or you can tap and, and make a non land permanent an artifact until end of turn, uh, which is awesome. It allows our Vandal Blast to hit things that it normally can't. Um, might save, uh, might give us some extra synergy with, um, you know, just like whatever. Um, we have tons of things that want to sack outlets, like Cold Delta Forge Master. We could maybe get an extra Scrap Trawler trigger. Um, just does tons of things and it's just a two mana mana rock with extra upside um which is awesome we will just take a two mana mana rock that just does nothing else and this does uh, quite a bit of extra nice little flexibility stuff so that's great memory jar five mana artifact sac tap and sack the memory jar each player sets aside their hand face down draw seven cards at the end of each player at the end of the turn each player discards their seven cards and then puts their hand back so it's basically uh, everybody sets their hand aside, you draw a new seven, and then you put that in your graveyard and put your hand back at the end of turn. Really weird card, really old card, um, but generally what you're gonna do in this deck is you're gonna either reanimate this um, and bring it back when you run out of things to do, and then draw a brand new hand, or if you're actually gonna cast this card for real, then you pay five mana, cast it, and pass, so that way next turn if you need to, or whenever you need to, you can sack it and then swap your hand. Um, notably, you can kind of work with your opponent sometimes if you really need to, uh, because discarding your drawing seven just to discard is not really that bad for you. Uh, and if you're really in dire straits, and the only way that you can get out of a situation is by letting your opponents draw some cards, so that way you can, you know, stop somebody from winning because they have an onboard win if they like untap or whatever. Then at least you can do that and like give them some more options. But with this deck, we don't really have issues answering things. Um, as we have plenty of ways that exile non-land permanents. So the normal pitfall of red, of like not being able to answer enchantments or big creatures or whatever, um, that's been kind of patched up with the way that the deck's built. Um, plus we still have ways to deal with colorless permanents, which is, you know, normally something red is good at. Uh, so this deck is, you know, pretty flexible. Even though it's mono red, it can deal with a lot of stuff. 
Um, but at least that option is there um, where you can work with your opponents a bit. Um, so yeah, this card's great though. It's just kind of like a pseudo wheel. Um, you want to make sure that you have basically all of your mana untapped when you sack this though. So just keep that in mind. Memory Jar is a really powerful old card. So a lot of people haven't like played with it or experienced it. Um, but you want to do this on your turn basically always. And then you want to use it when you have as much mana available as possible. So that way you can really play all the cards that you temporarily draw. But yeah, Memory Jar is great. Good card for the deck. It's an artifact. Synergizes with things that we need. And it gives us a temporary card draw. Instead of like the weird exile card draw that sometimes we won't be able to utilize in the deck very well. Um, so yeah, Memory Jar is great. Mindstone, classic. It's two mana artifact, taps for one. Tap and pay one to sack it, draw a card. So we run out of things to do, we can cash it in. That's great, it's a two mana mana rock. Mirage Mirror, cool flexible card. Three mana artifact. You pay two and it becomes a copy of target artifact, creature, or enchantment, or land until end of turn. Um, so the land is actually very important on this as you can uh, kind of protect it from board wipes and stuff. If your opponents try to Vandal Blast you or something, uh, you can pay two and turn this into a land. Then it's no longer a Mirage Mirror. So then it won't get blown up to the Vandal Blast or whatever, you know. Um, but there's plenty of just good synergy cards that we want to copy that we have, um, such as uh, Goblin Welders that we've referenced a lot, um, all that sort of stuff. Uh, maybe an Ingenious Artillerist if we need to do some extra damage. Maybe a Cold Oath of Forge Master if we need to tutor again. Um, just tons of stuff. Maybe you know, a Mirror Retriever if we really need something back from the graveyard, or two things, I should say. Um, but yeah, Mirage Mirror is just a really cool, flexible card. Allows us to do a lot of things that Mono Red's not normally supposed to do. Um, so, great card for the deck. And, and obviously it's an artifact, so it works with all the things we care about. Mox Opal. Um, we're an artifact-heavy deck, and it's Mana Ramp, so it's great for our deck. Mystic Forge. You may look... Man, I just gotta stop here for a second. These old border artifacts, I'm obviously the hipster here. So I love retro stuff, old uh, artifacts, especially old artifacts. The brown border is just so amazing. And then it's got the little jeweled text box. Oof. I'm so happy that some of these cards got old printings. Anyway, uh, Mystic Forge, four-man artifact. You may look at the top card of your library anytime. You may cast artifact spells and colorless spells from the top of your library, um, which is great. That's like most of our deck. Uh, and you can tap and pay one life to exile the top card of your library. So if it's like a mountain that gets stuck up, stuck up there or something once per turn, we can get rid of that and see the next card. Um, just a very powerful draw engine. Um, let's just play most of our deck off the top of our library. Amazing. And it's an artifact, so it works with the other things we got. New card. Very excited about this card. Portal 2 Phyrexia. It's a 9-mana artifact. When it enters the battlefield, each opponent sacrifices 3 creatures... At the beginning of your upkeep, put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. It's a Phyrexian addition to its other types. Wow, this is a hell of a card to cheat into play. Um, it's like a pseudo board wipe. Making your opponent sack three creatures, unless they're a tokens deck, that's like their entire board most of the time. And it's all of your opponents. You don't have to sacrifice anything. And each upkeep, if this thing sits around, then you just get to keep reanimating creatures. And if they kill it, who cares? It puts them back in your graveyard so you can make them sack their board again. This card seems extremely, like, oppressive uh, and powerful. Amazing card to, to uh, cheat into play with Cold Oath of Forge Master as well. Um, we don't even care that much if we don't get to reanimate things. If we just make them sack three things immediately, um, just repeatedly, it's like they just aren't going to be able to do hardly anything. So, yeah. Uh, most artifact decks moving forward, I imagine, will play Portal to Phyrexia. Artifact decks are just good at producing a ton of mana, but typically have a hard time interacting while they're doing their thing. Uh, and this does that. And it forces an answer from your opponents as they really want to remove this thing, even though they you already got the main thing that you cared about. Because reanimating creature every upkeep is can be pretty backbreaking as well. Uh, so Portal to Phyrexia, amazing. Uh, and it's not legendary, which it kind of looks like it should be. And because it's not legendary, it's a good car card to copy with Sculpting Steel, the next card. Uh, it's a three-mana artifact, and you can have it enter as a copy of any artifact on the battlefield. Great card. You can have it copy an artifact land if you want to ramp with it. Uh, you can copy insane cards like Portal to Phyrexia if you want to. Um, just a sweet card. Really good role player in artifact decks. Next up, another new card. Smelting Vat. This is a card I'm interested to try in this deck. It's a 4 mana artifact. You can pay 1, tap, sacrifice another artifact. 
lots of words. Reveal the top eight cards of your library. Put up to two non-creature artifact cards with total mana value less than or equal to the sacrificed mana value from among those cards onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Okay, that's a lot of words. Uh, okay, so it's a sack outlet for artifacts, which is nice. Uh, and it gives you extra value. It gives you two cards, up to two cards, from the top eight that are non-creature artifacts. But the total mana value can add up to the thing that you sacrifice. Luckily, we have a lot of big artifacts that we can sacrifice that we want to sacrifice. So that way we can bring them back from the graveyard again. So, yeah, this seems like the things that we want to be doing. Um, the two non, the getting non-creature artifacts from this card is like not that big of a bummer. Um, we have 25 non-creature artifacts. And a lot of these are actually pretty small CMC uh, outside of like Portal to Phyrexia. Uh, and a lot of the artifact creatures we have are big CMC. So it seems pretty likely that we could sack, you know, a, uh, a Mirror Battle Sphere and get like, uh, I don't know, a Mirage Mirror and an Arcane Signet. And that still feels pretty good. Um, so yeah, I'm willing to try this card out. Seems pretty sweet for this deck. Um, definitely not like great in like every artifact deck, um, but it seems like it fits our artifact deck quite well. Soul Ring, you know what it does. It's good. Soul Guide Lantern. Oh, man, a pet card of mine. It's a one-mana artifact. Whenever it enters the battlefield, you exile target card from a graveyard. You can tap and sack this to exile each opponent's graveyard, and you can pay one tap and sack the Soul Guide Lantern to draw a card. So Soul Guide Lantern, um, it's a card that I haven't like gone in depth about and like waxed lyrical to you all about, um, but this card is just so, so good. This is like the best artifact graveyard piece for commander that we've ever gotten i think it's one mana a lot of times when when you the only thing that is like a downside to this card is it's a, like not an instant but like is that really a downside it's on a permanent it's an artifact it works with like you can play it in any deck and like a lot of times when you play cards like this you only really care about well not always but a lot of times you only need to hit one card in a graveyard the one really scary thing in a graveyard um and then that's gone and then if that's all you need to hit this can just sit there and be annoying and prevent your graveyard opponents from doing their thing because at any time you can sack this and blow up all their graveyards and not your own graveyard that's the other amazing thing about this card is most of their artifacts that do this sort of effect they hit all graveyards this is about the only one that hits only your opponent's graveyards and not yours so even graveyard decks can play this card um, but if that's not good enough, if at any point you don't feel the need to hang on to this thing anymore and you really need something else to do, you can just cash this in for a new card by paying one mana and sacking it. So this card's never bad. <laughs> you can basically play this in any deck. Ideally, I would rather play this in decks that get extra synergies from it, like artifact decks like this one. Um, but sometimes if my deck just needs graveyard hate, which all of them do, and I can't find a way to do it within the theme of my deck, then... I'll just put a Soul Guide Lantern in there. Um, yeah, this card's just amazing. If we are dealing with some other heavy graveyard players, this is, this gives us a way to recursively interact with what they're doing uh, while not interrupting our game plan at all. Uh, as we just want to bring back artifacts anyway, this is an artifact we can bring back, and we can just keep repeatedly exiling their entire graveyard if we really need to. Um, this card can be pretty oppressive sometimes. But... It is very, very good at what it does. And what it does is mostly stopping degenerate strategies like the one we're doing with our deck. <laughs> um, so yeah, Soul Guide Lantern, amazing card. Um, fits the deck perfectly as well. No reason not to play it. Spine of Ishsa, seven mana artifact. Whenever it enters the battlefield, you destroy target permanent. And when it's put into the graveyard from the battlefield, you return it to its hand. So re recursive uh, you know, interaction with anything on the battlefield. Uh, and it's on an artifact, which is great. Um, we have plenty of ways to sack this and put it into our graveyard to keep getting it back. Um, it's very expensive interaction, but once again, Mono Red struggles with lots of card types, uh, and this kind of helps us get around that. And we have plenty of ways to discount this. We have lots of Mana Rocks, uh, which we have a few more coming up as well. So yeah, this card is definitely, 7 mana is not the worst ask in the world, and being able to always get this back and keep doing it uh, with whatever problem permanents there are, if we can't get rid of them in other ways, um, then that's what Spine of Ishsa is here to do. Stone Speaker Crystal, four mana artifact, taps for two colorless. You can pay two tap and sack this. 
to exile any number of target players' graveyards, and then you draw a card. Once again, instant no graveyard hate. Very important. And once again, this one does not hit our graveyard, which is extremely important. And it even replaces itself. It draws us a card. Um, so yeah, this card is, is great for our deck. Once again, if we need another way to interact with graveyards, this is there for that, which is very important, and it doesn't hurt our graveyard. And in the meantime, it's just a really good mana rock. Seems like a perfect fit for our deck. Thran Dynamo, another four mana artifact. This one just taps to boost three colorless mana. Just a huge mana rock, basically gives us all of our, almost all of our mana back immediately. Um, and then for the rest of the game, produces a ton of mana. Um, the only holdup that I usually have with Thran Dynamo is I don't like playing it in decks that are color intensive. Nothing over three colors I play this in. Three colors and more, I don't play this in. Two color decks, I'm even iffy on this. I really want lots of colorless cards in my deck or lots of you know colorless mana on my deck so that way I can make sure I can utilize this mana because three colorless mana is, can definitely be awkward sometimes. Um, but yeah, in this deck, our whole deck is basically colorless and artifacts. So Thrain Dynamo is perfect. Trading Post, love this card. Four mana artifact. Uh, it has four abilities. All of them you pay one and tap and then do an effect. The first one you discard a card and gain four life. The next one you pay one life and create a zero one goat creature token. The next one you tap and sac or return an artifact. Sacrifice a creature, you return an artifact from your graveyard to your hand. Sacrifice an artifact, draw a card. So this is a sack outlet for us if we need it to draw more cards. Or we can sack our creatures to get an artifacts back from our graveyard if we don't other have uh, other ways to reanimate them. Or if they're just too small to reanimate and we really need them back, like the Soul Guide Lantern we were talking about earlier stuff. Like that. And we have plenty of ways to mill ourselves as well, not just discarding it to our commander. Um, so we can definitely use this as kind of a toolboxy sort of utility card. Um, it even gives us a discard outlet, so it just kind of does everything that our deck wants to do. Little mana intensive, but that's fine. We'll take it. Really good flexible card. Wayfarer's Bobble. Classic ramp spell. It's a one mana artifact. You can pay two tap and sack to get a basic land put on the battlefield tapped. We need ramp. It's an artifact. It's cheap. It's good. All right. Uh, so we're going to move on to lands. Nothing too crazy here. We have a few highlights, um, but I'll try to move this pretty quick. It's a monocolor deck, so, you know, it's nothing crazy. We're running uh, a large number of mountains as we have a, uh, a Valakut in the deck, um, which cares about playing mountains. Uh, and then we have uh, Ancient Tomb to ramp a bit. Blast Zone, because once again, red struggles with certain permanent types, so this kind of helps us deal with that. Um, I'm, like I said, I'm just going to go through these quickly, so if you want to pause and read these, feel free to. Um, Buried Rune, I'm playing an artifact deck, so really important for me to have a way to get back artifacts from a land slot if I can, uh, and this does that. The artifact lands, once again, I'm going to highlight, they're very important for the deck as they add to our artifact count from, the, from a land slot, as well as um, they're great cards to pitch to our commander if we're flooding out, uh, as they'll still give us a mana source, uh, and, you know, we can cash them in for a new card. So, um, keep that in mind. Do not be scared to uh, pitch your artifact lands to your commander or whatever other sort of discard synergy you have. Demolition Field. This is a new card, so I'll read it really quickly. But essentially, Field of Rune was a card that people have kind of lamented because it's a card that should be playable in commander, but just the fact that it randomly ramps your two other opponents is, like, really dumb. Uh, and this card just fixes it. Uh, it basically does the same Field of Ruin effect. You tap, tap two, tap and sack this, destroy a non-basic land that opponent controls, and then you and that player both get a basic land and put it on the battlefield. So it just does the Field of Ruin for just you and that player instead of all of your opponents. Really good uh, land hate card. Um, a lot of I, I'm definitely not playing Ghost Quarter anymore over this card or Tectonic Edge or anything like that. Um, I always thought that um, the important part is that you don't go down a land. Um, the only reason that Strip Mine and like Wasteland are like playable is because they're just like so efficient and they don't give anybody any resources. So even though you have to tank your your mana source, at least you got to blow up the Gaia's Cradle or whatever that's going to make you lose the game if you don't answer it. Um, but you really don't want to use the Strip Mine if you don't have to. Um, this one you can be much more frugal with, uh, as you can blow up their thing and then. Um, it's not like a super feels bad for either of you because you both get a land to replace it. So nobody goes down any mana. Um, obviously, it's a little more mana intensive. costs one extra mana over the tech edge. But the land under is untapped, so you don't really miss out on the mana anyway. So, yeah, Demolition Field, you're going to see it a lot. 
it's a really good uh, card that you need in your decks because you need lands that hate other lands because there's just so many broken lands in the format. Um, so these cards are necessary, especially in a monocolor deck where you have flex slots for this stuff. Um, yeah, you're going to see a lot of this card going forward. It's a really good card. Don't sleep on it. Emergence Zone, just a good utility card that allows you to cast things at flash speed. Sometimes that's really important. Um, don't sleep on this card. It's a good land. Uh, good land to put in your monocolor decks especially. Gaia Reach Sanitarium, really good discard outlet for us um, to draw and discard if we our commander gets stuck in the command zone or something like that. Um, Gaia Reach Sanitarium is uh, a good sort of backup plan. Uh, Great Furnace, Artifact Land. Adventures Fair, good card for us. Gives us a backup tutor if we really need it. Um, but in the meantime, it just gains us some life. So that's good. Cool fallback. Having a tutor from a land is really powerful, even though it's something we don't want to have to do or uh, spend a million mana on, but it's there. Phyrexia's Core, very important for card for the deck. It's an artifact sack outlet on a land. Even though the effect is very minimal, it seems, just like High Market, this card is a really good role player in the deck. So don't forget that you have this effect to access if you really need to sack an artifact to be able to recur it from the graveyard. This is about the only land that you can do that with. Power Depot. Um, it's a weird tapped artifact land with modular. Um, once again, the important thing is that's an artifact land. We're playing every artifact land that we can. Um, this one especially is a good one to pitch to Mishra. Sanctum of Ugin. Uh, if we cast a big colorless spell, we can tutor for a big colorless creature, or really any colorless creature. Um, and it's just that effect on an untapped land. So great, great for us. Treasure Vault. It's an untapped land, and you can make more treasures with it if you need to for a very hefty mana cost. Um, nice mana sink. If we want to just produce a lot of artifacts for our Reckless Fireweaver or whatever, then we can do that. Um, but it's just an artifact land. We just play all of those because they're good as they are. Urza Saga. This can get lots of stuff for us. We want to make Karnstructs with this generally um, because that's just powerful on our deck. Um, but when we sack it to tutor for an artifact, we have quite a few good options. We have Soul Ring. We have uh, Soul Guide Lantern if we need Graveyard Hate. Um, lots of stuff to get with this. Good card for our deck. But uh, we generally want to make Karnstructs when we can with it because those are just giant creatures for us. Valakut mentioned it earlier. War Room. You know I love this card in monocolor decks. If we need a Mana Sink to draw cards because we run out of things to do, that effect is just on an efficient land, so we love that. Okay, so sideboard. Um, my thing with building artifact decks is I lament and I make 200 card decks and then I have to spend hours and hours trying to cut cards down. So that's why um, this it's pretty dark in here because I've been cutting cards for a very long time from this deck trying to get it ready. Um, but yeah, we're going to go through the sideboard. I decided to keep 25 cards in here in the sideboard to kind of show you some options that I was considering. Um, I'm not going to read through all of them to not try to extend the length of the video, but if any of them are interesting to you then uh, or you don't know what they do, feel free to pause and then read them and then you know go with my commentary. Um, Audacious Reshapers. Um, we have a lot of artifacts that we can hit that aren't really that impactful, so even though this you know will sack to get a new artifact, um, we can hit like anything from just a land to whatever. Uh, and it's a three mana creature that's not an artifact, and we need to untap with it to do its thing. So um, it just doesn't do enough, I don't think, even though this seems like the deck it would be in. Uh, I mean, maybe you could try it if you're really interested in it, but um, I just don't think it does enough. It's too slow. The value is not there enough. There's just way too many whiffs that we can hit in the deck, even though we could technically hit like a Mirror Battle Spieler or Portal to Phyrexia or whatever. We don't really have ways to manipulate that to make sure that happens or even reliably do that. So to me, that's just not worth it. Big score. Um, these sort of extra discard outlets um, to, you know, pitch a card and draw new cards. Um, these just aren't artifacts. And I wanted to like sort of cut uh, as many, basically all of these that I originally had in the deck list to once again, maximize our artifact card count for the uh, Sahili's directives and um, scrap masteries and all that stuff. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm starting to go hoarse a little bit. So speech is getting a little tough. Probably need a new drink. <laughs> Mm. Ah, nice and bitter um, so yeah big score uh, I really love this card but it doesn't give us card advantage which is the main thing that mono red struggles with even though it does produce two artifacts for us and kind of help repay its costs a bit um, 
It's just not an artifact. I try to get as much of this effect on artifacts and other things that I could. Um, so yeah, this is definitely a card that could be played in the deck and work just fine um, if you don't have some of the other cards like Wheel of Fortune or whatever and you don't want, and you don't feel comfortable proxying. Um, but yeah, you know, I just ended up cutting these because they weren't artifacts and I needed to make cuts. Um, but I don't think we're going to run out of things to do, so I feel comfortable cutting them. Cathartic Reunion, in the same boat. I basically put all of these sort of discard draw effects uh, all down here. So these are the ones that I was considering and I think are good enough. Uh, so if you want to run them, these are the ones that I would consider. Um, Chaos Warp, <laughs> I was really reluctant to cut this card. You know, catch-all removal is very important, especially in Mono Red, like I said, where we can't deal with a lot of permanent types. But I felt com comfortable and pretty confident with the uh, artifact suite that we have in the deck. Um, that we should be able to handle most problems where we don't have to take away from the synergy of our deck to run a card like Chaos, Chaos Warp. Um, but even like I said, Chaos Warp, just one of the better removal spells in the format. It's a catch-all, um, which Red really struggles with. So if you ran the card in the deck, by all means, I understand why. Um, but I feel like our removal suite and our uh, card sort of deck list that we have currently can deal with basically anything that I feel comfortable with. I don't have to pull away from my synergy to make Chaos Warp go. Combustible Gearhulk, uh, a fine artifact creature. Um, I don't really like it. Your opponents, uh, if they're smart, will always make you mill. And even though we have some big uh, CMCs in the deck and um, milling is generally good for us, um, this is just like the worst of the artifact creatures that I had. Uh, and I had to make some cuts, so... Yeah, I ended up cutting this one, and then the fact that it's also a colored permanent, so it dies to all of our kill all colored permanent stuff, like uh, Ugin and all his dust and stuff, was just the extra icing on top for me to make this cut. But um, definitely a fine card in the deck, and uh, will fulfill its role for sure in this deck better than any deck, but I'm just not a fan. Uh, deflecting Swap, it's free interaction, you know, Mono Red doesn't really do that, so like, but once again it pulls away from the synergy of the deck. And uh, I, once again, I feel confident that the way that we have the deck built uh, will be very consistent where we don't need to pull away from the synergy of the deck. Um, so yeah, the Flecking Squad just got the axe for that reason. Endless Atlas. This is probably probably the first card I would put back in the deck. Um, it's a two-minute artifact. I'll read this one. It's a two-minute artifact that you can tap to and tap to draw a card. And you can activate only if you control three or more lands with the same name. Uh, we play plenty of mountains where we can reliably basically always have this online. And having consistent card draw, like I said earlier, is very important uh, in Mono Red, as it typically struggles with that. Um, but I felt like we had enough things to do, and we have pretty reliable card advantage um, from our graveyard that I felt like this would sometimes just sit there and not really do anything. Um, but... It's definitely a really consistent card. It will help smooth out a lot of games where we have rough draws, but we have this. So, once again, whatever the first underperformer in the deck is, I would say probably replace it with Endless Atlas and you'll be very happy. Um, but yeah, this is just a card that I decided to cut. This is like the last card I cut. Um, but it's, it's a really good card. It'll work really well in the deck, but... Um, this was just the one that I decided to cut, so I could see if you wanted to put it back in. Expedition map, um, really good artifact, but I just didn't feel like any of our artifacts were like powerful enough to be like wanting to dirtle around and play with this card. Um, it's a fine card. I mean, like you could go get a Valakut, but I mean Valakut's just like fine nowadays. So I don't know. I wasn't. I decided to cut Expedition Map. I felt like it didn't do enough. It doesn't ramp. It just kind of dirtles and doesn't really even get a card that we really care about that much. So, I don't know. You could play it. It's a fine card, but I wasn't thrilled about it. Faithless Looting. Um, really good way to put things in our graveyard and, uh, you know, kind of find the cards we want. But it puts us down a card. So, once again, I wanted to try to avoid that, especially if it pulls away from the synergy of our deck. So, yeah, Faithless Looting, solid card, but um, I don't think it's good enough for the build that we have. Farid Enterprising Salvager, that's a hell of a name. Uh, really cool, interesting new card. Uh, the main draw for this card to me was that um, it just makes tons of extra artifact material whenever we sack artifact material that we have. 
um, which is pretty powerful but the three mana for putting that out there and then none of the effects we really care about um, is kind of a bummer um, and it's not an artifact creature itself so it doesn't really synergize with our deck in that way so it's just a little awkward um, I really like the heavy amount of artifact production that it has but the artifacts that it makes literally do nothing um, and some uh, there's definitely some important cards in the deck that care about non-token artifacts as well so this doesn't really even do anything with those so it just felt like all in all it just didn't add up to be enough for the deck to warrant taking up a non-artifact slot in the deck gipper aether grid um cool interesting card um once again i only have so many uh non-artifact slots in the deck um, this one's pretty good interaction though however a lot of the artifacts that we have in the deck we want to use actively they produce mana or they're big and we want them to attack um, so yeah, all that, all in all, I felt like this didn't deserve, um, the, the slot in the deck. However, the one thing that this is really good at is interacting with like go wide, tons of little small creatures, uh, as you can blow up their creature that anthems and then start machine gunning their little one ones or whatever. Um, so if you're in a meta that's like heavy with like go widey sort of decks, then this is very stellar at dealing with those. Um, but I felt like the way that we have our deck built um, we have plenty of answers to a deck like that. Um, so yeah, I didn't feel like this needed to be in the deck as a non-artifact card. Ghost Arc. Really cool, interesting card. Um, I didn't feel like I had enough artifact creatures. Um, and the ones that I did, I don't really want to exile. Um, and this is not a card I really ever want to like reanimate. And it can be kind of mana intensive to bring back the things that I want to bring back and not even that many things that I can bring back. So the way that I just had the deck built, um, it just didn't do enough. Um, really cool, interesting card, though. can be powerful in certain builds, um, but I didn't think this was one of them. Uh, Joy is familiar. Just too expensive for the thing that it does for our deck. We have plenty of uh, better ways to do this that are already in the deck. And I didn't feel like I needed more. Lodestone Golem kind of does the inverse of the last card. Uh, this card I don't think does enough to warrant the hate that your opponents are going to give you for this card. They're going to be very annoyed at you and try to beat the shit out of you. So uh, I didn't feel like this card uh, did enough for the deck for that reason. Uh, Mirror Works, just a bit too mana intensive for the deck. Um, this card just doesn't make the cut nowadays for me and just about any artifact deck. Um... I mean, it's fine. The nice thing, though, is that um, we ideally want to be reanimating artifacts where we aren't paying full retail, and then we will have two mana left over. But we have to pay five mana to do nothing up front, and then we have to start paying mana on top of it. So it's just so slow and mana intensive. And um, yeah, this card just doesn't make the cut for me. But um, if it's a pet card of yours, it'll do fine in the deck. Mycosynth Golem don't quite have enough artifact creatures specifically to make this card at its best similar to uh the same reason why we're not running like ghost arc um there could be a world where you are very artifact creature heavy but i didn't feel like there was enough like big artifact creature threats that could like really close the game and do a lot and stuff like that where i felt like just throwing this expensive synergy piece in um would like do very much um which is kind of the reason why I almost cut um, the Canoptic Spider, um, but I felt like it was good enough uh, with like Scrap Mastery and some of the other big sorceries that we bring everything back with, like Sahili's Directive and such. We could just draw like a ton of cards out of nowhere, uh, where I felt like that synergy was good enough. Meanwhile, like Michael Synth Golem and the uh, and the Ghost Arc were just not gonna cut it compared to that card. Um, so yeah, I could see a build where. It, that is war it would that is your main game plan um but i just didn't find enough like impactful artifact creatures where i wanted to, wanted to run a lot of these cards that care specifically about artifact creatures network terminal nice little uh mana rock it's three mana it taps for any one mana of any one color and you can tap this one in an untapped artifact you control to draw a card and discard a card um really cool card uh, however, I think we're going to be fine at putting artifacts in our graveyard as it is. 
where I don't really want to play a three mana mana rock. Um, so yeah, this card is definitely a fine card. You could use this to replace almost any mana rock in the deck and be pretty happy. Like for example, once again, if you don't like proxying cards, which I would encourage you to proxy cards. Uh, if you don't like Mox, then like you could cut the uh, the Mox Opal if you don't have one. If you're like a budget player or something, for uh, for this card, and it will be just fine. It'll be a good card in your deck. It does all the things that you want to do. It's just inefficient at doing them, um, which can be fine in some circumstances. But um, you know, I just didn't think it made the cut. Sandstone Oracle. Another card I kind of lamented cutting as it does all the things that we want. It's an artifact creature. It draws us cards when we're down bad, um, which red sometimes will be. Um, but I felt like we would have enough card advantage in the deck as it stands where uh, I didn't need to dip this low um, because I don't think this card is good. Um, but it can be fine in certain circumstances, which, which if it's going to be fine in any circumstance, this deck would probably be one of would probably be that circumstance. Um, so, I mean, this could end up being a card that has to get added to the deck, but I don't really see it. I don't think this card's good enough. Thought Vessel. Okay. This is my daily reminder that you don't always want no max hand size. Sometimes discarding cards is good. We want to discard cards sometimes. We won't often will to hand size in this deck, but even if we do, that's fine. Because we'll have lands to discard if we want to keep the cards in our hand. Or we can pitch the artifacts in our graveyard, which we want to put there anyway. So just keep in mind, if you're in a card, if you're in a deck that already wants to discard, don't put cards like this in your deck. Don't put Reliquary Tower in your deck. Don't play this card. You want to discard the hand size. That's a good thing for you. So don't play Thought Vessel. If you really want to toot another two mana mana rock, there's a bunch of other ones I didn't put in the deck. Um, there's the one that can roll the planner die. There's Prismatic Lens that do like these. Mana rocks do nothing else but two mana tap for a color, which this card does, but it gives you an active downside for your deck, which is no max hand size. That is not good. You do not want that. So don't play Thought Vessel in this deck, okay? Play other mana rocks if you really feel like you need another mana rock. It's my public service announcement. Don't always play no max hand size. Okay, next card, Thrill of Possibility, another one of the loot cards. Um, fine card for the deck. Didn't make the cut because it's not an artifact. Unexpected Windfall, same thing. Visions of Phyrexia, cool new card. Um, if you want an Outpost Siege for your deck, this is definitely one of the better Outpost Sieges for the deck. So if you're in Mono Red, definitely consider this card. Um, but for our deck, wasn't an artifact. The fact that it makes Power Stones is not really good enough for us. Uh, we don't want, like I said, we don't want to run like any artif non-artifacts that we don't have to. So this ended up getting the cut, even though it could be a fine card for the deck. Wheel of Misfortune, could run this card. Honestly, nowadays, this card just annoys me more than anything because it's just so hard to resolve. All your opponents ask you, what does it do? Could you read it again? I need to read it. And it just takes five minutes for this really for this not really that complex card to resolve. Um, so that's just really annoying. But anyway, it's good. Like, you can play it. Um, you can basically always guarantee that you will, which is very good for you. Um, but it's a non-artifact card in your artifact deck. Once again, we want to have as many artifacts as we can. So if you're going to add one of these sort of draw discardy sort of effects in the deck, this is the first one I would add. And then I would start adding big score, unexpected windfall, uh, that sort of stuff. But, you know, um, I tried to cut all of them that I could. Wheel of Fortune was just so good that I kept it in. Wild Magic Surge. This is normally a very good mono red card as it allows you to interact with permits you can't normally interact with. However, I feel like, once again, that we are uh, very comfortable and being able to deal with most things, so I don't feel that we need to take away from our synergy to interact with things. Uh, move on to the next card. That's the last time I'm going to do that spiel, because we're on the last card, Wondrous Crucible, another interesting new card. It's a seven mana artifact. Permanents you control have Ward 2. At the beginning of your end step, mill two cards, then exile a non land card at random from your graveyard, copy it, you may cast the copy without paying its mana cost. Okay, um, this reminds me a lot of Dead Bridge Chant, which is a bad card. <laughs> um, it mills you repeatedly, which is cool. Giving your permanence ward two is not nothing, but it's not like a ton. Like whatever the problem permanent is, they can kill that. Um, the only annoying time, the only thing that's annoying is if they have to kill two permanents. If they want to kill all your permanents, they're going to do that. They're going to board wipe you and still going to kill you all your, all your permanents. 
But this card's just knowing if they want to kill two permanents. I don't want to spend seven mana on this card for, and that's my main upside. The card advantage that this offers you of copying uh, non-land permanents um, just doesn't seem like enough to me for a seven mana artifact. Um, this card's cool and interesting. Like if you played it, like I'm sure it would be like fine. But for seven mana, I really want something more reliable than this where I get consistent value. But if you're a real Timmy player and you like big splashy things happening, um, then this will randomly sometimes do that and then you'll feel good. But for me, I like real consistent game plans. Um, I like my deck to do the thing I like to have. Well, I, if I'm gonna sit down for like an hour plus of a commander game, I wanna do my thing. Uh, even if I don't win, that's fine. I gotta do my artifact stuff. I gotta get lots of value. Then maybe I died to something, but that's fine. Uh, for me, if I'm gonna sit down and do a game, I wanna make sure that I'm doing my thing um, even if it's not like I'm playing the most insane cards that I can play, you know what I mean? Um, I don't care about playing the most powerful deck. I just want consistent decks. Uh, and this deck's very consistent. This card doesn't make the deck more consistent. I think it makes it less consistent. Um, as you exile the card from your graveyard, which you don't actively want, even though you get a copy of it one time, this deck is very good at doing the thing over and over and over again. If you have something in your graveyard that you want to keep bringing back, uh, you can choose it with the effects we have in the deck. You don't have to randomly get it with this. And sometimes this might randomly hit something that you want to stay in your graveyard and not get exiled, and it's not worth it creating one effect, such as the Canoptic Tomb Spider, or Sentinel, sorry, right? So, because if you exile that and create a tap, uh, token copy of that, it does nothing. It's just a 4-3 Vigilance. And then you can no longer loop this from your graveyard and exile non-land permanents. And there's plenty of other cards in the deck that this just doesn't really do a whole lot with. Um, so yeah, this card is cool, it's interesting, um, but you know, it's just not for me. It's not the card for the deck the way that I have it built. Um, cool card, maybe you could try it out if you like it, if you are a certain kind of player, like I said. Um, but this is a good PSA for the deck that this kind of takes away, even though this looks like it fits the deck, it, it kind of can randomly take away from the deck even though it's like milling you and doing your thing. So just keep that in mind. Anyway. Thank you for sticking with me to the end. This has been, uh, I called this deck a Baby Mishra Artifact Reanimator. Um, this has been Baby Mishra Artifact Reanimator uh, with me, Blake, uh, Hipster Highlander. Uh, it's been Brews Day. Hope you've had a brew with me. This Voodoo Ranger Imperial IPA has been quite nice. Um, hope you have a great day. Thanks for checking it out. If you would like to see a certain kind of deck or around a certain commander, I'm always open for suggestions. I love brewing decks. Every Tuesday, I'll be back making a new brew for you. I'm going to try to stay active on it again, um, even though Magic's got me down lately with all the whack-ass products they've been making. Um, I love the game. love playing Commander, so try to stay on top of it, making content for y'all. So, love y'all. Take care.